And here we are, game number one, TSL 3, baby. We're finally here. We're looking at Liquid Tyler taking on the warship Mouse Strela. We've spawned on a modified Shakuris Plateau where uh, only cross positions are available. So they're going to know this has uh, been modified as a one vs. one map. Correct me if I'm uh, not right, Hotbid. We have Liquid Tyler spawning as the blue Protoss in the bottom right. His opponent, Mouse Straylock, the red Terran, in the upper left. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is that I think a lot of people will just say, oh, well, you know, if it's cross position, then it makes the early game really, really easy, you know, because there's no risk of having that backdoor alleyway. So people automatically assume that's going to make it a big, long macro map. But I want you to just come to the top right corner of the map with me. This main is the most reasonable place that Tyler's going to be want to taking his fourth, and in particular, that mm -hmm. natural is his third. So that means that Straylock is going to have a very easy access to those later expansions. So in a sense, when you have cross positions, it can be quite difficult to defend all the possible attack routes in the later stages. And especially with the amount of drops that Straylock is known to be doing, I think Tyler would definitely be wise to try to do some sort of two base push or put on a lot of pressure right from the get-go. Yeah, very true. As we see uh, largely standard play going down, second chrono boost dropped on his Nexus for Tyler, throwing down that 14 assimilator and scouting with his probe after uh, the standard 12 gateway. Meanwhile, Straylock uh, following up with a 14 refinery, going to complete that barracks. Has not sent out a scout yet. Uh, probably knows Liquid Tyler, not the type of person to open up with any sort of proxy gateways, especially on a map like this, one versus one. Now going to send that SCV out. Probe is in the main base. Going to see what kind of scouting he can get done on Straylock. Nothing too out of the ordinary from Straylock. Again, standard is standard gets. No real reason to do any big deviation. Um, because, as many of you know, you have to build a supply depot before you build the barracks. Didn't used to be the case, but now that it is, you pretty much always go for that 15 <laughs> orbital command and that gas. And it looks like, interestingly, Straylock going to do a little bit of a delayed rewall off. That's, that's fairly uncommon. Throwing down that tech lab now. Uh, given Straylock's style, I would most likely suspect that he's going for some sort of early expand off one barracks. Yeah, I tend to agree. We can see him getting that tech lab on the barracks. Meanwhile, Tyler actually getting a zealot out to deal with this SCV while he waits for a cybernetics core. Saving up uh, Chrono Boost just a little bit as he's peaking at 50 energy. Cybernetics core going to finish. I wouldn't be surprised to see him Chrono Boosting the Warp Gate and the Stalker coming out of the gateway. But no, he's going to do neither. Looks like we do have the uh, Marauder and the Concussive Shell popping out right now. There's the double Chrono Boost. Love it when Tyler gets these sentries really, really fast. I mean, very uncommon unit to rush for in this matchup, but Tyler's very talented at doing uh, a lot of funky Phoenix openings or even some early expands off one base. And look at that, another Zealot coming out of that gateway chill. That is a, that is a fascinating opening indeed. That is very <laughs> atypical. I would imagine a Stargate going to get plopped yeah, down by this. Be, oh. And what? back to Straylock's base where things make sense. <laughs> well, this is really surprising because he's got that double assimilator. It seems to set up nicely uh, to get that Stargate out very quickly and uh, mm -hmm. continue up with Zealot production as obviously they don't cost gas. But uh, yeah, that we see he's not going with that, going for the more safer uh, just two-gate robo and uh, not the standard two-gate into robo, one-gate into robo and uh, followed up by a second gateway. Now we see the two Marauders with Concussive Shells complete uh, joining the train of SCV and Marine. They're going to take a peek, see no expansion, and actually oh. going to throw up a little bit of a containing bunker. Why not? I like this. I love this. Notice that this bunker is not designed to actually hit units on the ramp. It's designed to draw mm -hmm. units down from the ramp. And this is a very, very common, strong play a lot more Terrans are doing nowadays easy easy way to either pick off units or just to get a contain if you know Tyler who's being very smart knows he can't take that um, is forced to wait Tyler throws down the third gateway but I think that Straylock is going to be disappointed to find out that there's this ultra fast immortal coming out yeah actually Tyler not getting a uh, an observer just getting the, straight for the immortal you can see uh, I'm checking that nexus energy up at 36 so he's got one chrono boost available not using it and look at Straylock so smart this is the Gosh, hallmark that's good of timing. a good player who doesn't waste <laughs> anything he unloads salvage it you know that costs zero and it's cost I guess it's cost Tyler <laughs> uh, one guardian oh. shield energy as he throws that down and then sees oh wait there's nothing down here and meanwhile Straylock's got his expansion up largely for free yeah, I cannot emphasize how just comically awesome that timing was by Straylock. 
a chrono boosted immortal that came out kind of fast, kind of at a weird time, right when it popped out. Right. The bunker was half done salvaging. I mean, Straylock just having an incredible grasp on Terran timings. And there's the bunker at his own front. And now the usual three barracks uh, down. We see the second refinery going down in the main. Just a stellar timing by Straylock. Yeah, I mean, expansion timings look very, very nice for Straylock. You've got to favor him. He's got that second orbital command up. He's been mining from it for quite a while. Harvester count 29 versus 29. But the income tab tells the tale here with Straylock sitting at about 50% higher than uh, Liquid Tyler as he waits to get his expansion nexus up. Scan hits directly on that. Going to see uh, five sentries sitting out there and a single immortal. Meanwhile, robotics facility having no action and uh, uncharacteristic for Liquid Tyler. He's got 75 energy in that main nexus, so Chrono Boost uh, beginning to build up. Looks like he's going to be trying to save it up to do the range and Colossus very, very quickly. Tyler does love staying a little bit low on the gateway, getting a little bit faster with the Colossus. Mm -hmm. In fact, his old style involved getting two Robos and three gateways. A lot of those uh, Colossi out on the field. You see Straylock getting the usual engineering bay and factory and moving out for a little bit of pressure. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure uh, if he's actually going to commit with this. Probably move forward, just see what he can do. Uh, keep some presence, presence on the map. Tyler, of course, aware of it as he's got this observer chasing the army all the way back to his main base. Sentries, a lot of force fields available there. And Straylock moving forward, he does have stim. Going to stim a single marine up to scout and then uh, decides it's not worth it. Just dancing around, trying to figure out exactly is this his timing? Should he risk it or play a little bit safer and come back another day? There's that Chrono Boost going down on that Colossus right now. It's about halfway done, and Tyler's Observer hanging out over that little force that is at the front of his base. And we meanwhile look back to Straylock's base, has those tech labs down. He's getting the reactor star for but here's the big push from Tyler with some incredible force fields, locking out a lot of those infantry, picking them off. There's the restim by Straylock, and again, the force field hug doing incredible, <laughs> incredible damage. Yeah, just wrapping those glassy arms right around the army of Straylock and hugging him in tight with that Protoss bear hug that everyone loves. With the Colossus now out, Liquid Tyler is in a full march directly into the warship's main base. Unfortunately, he salvaged that bunker trying to be as efficient as possible, trying to throw it up now so he can live this attack, swapping out the starport for the reactor so he can get those Vikings out to deal with the Colossus. But this is a scary attack coming from Liquid Tyler doesn't have range yet that's going to be the one benefit that Straylock's going to need to rely on and look at this getting two medevacs instead of those two vikings looks like he has confidence in his stalker count but uh oh here comes all the zealots and the sentries and there's oh. the force field and it looks like the bunker he will not be able to get in in time and it looks like an scv actually blocking the path oh another great oh, force field damn. to lock everything out and there just walks right in with tyler's full army and there's the force field and the good game tyler takes wow. game one Completely uncontested un, uh, once he gets in the main. Throw that force field up on the ramp, and you know you are never getting down there for the next 17 minutes. Straylock realizing that, knowing it's over, and conceding GG. I'm really surprised that Tyler uh, pressed the issue there, forcing out with those five uh, sentries and just catching Straylock. Uh, so powerful if you can place those force fields in the right position. And Tyler uh, surprisingly didn't even wait. For that Colossus, looks like he wanted the Colossus to be part of the reinforcing army, but didn't need it to take down Straylock's main army. Just moved out, put the force field around, isolating half the units, and then cleaned up. There's a great little alternation of strong timings by both players with Straylock. Uh, excuse me, with Tyler beginning with a very cool, um, funky Robo Bay directly into the Zealot Sentry Immortal mix, and then Straylock doing the cancel on the bunker at the last second. Both players playing really well, but I mean, it goes to show you that when you're playing at this level, you have to be so careful. Straylock was a little bit too close to that ramp of Liquid Tyler's natural expansion. So when Tyler did decide to move down the ramp, Straylock didn't quite have enough time to react. He got cut in half by force fields. And given the fact that Tyler is renowned for his extremely strong mouse control, planted those force fields beautifully right. and just crushed that force. Yeah, I like the idea of Straylock being on the map, having presence. You don't want your Protoss opponent to feel like he can just, just build up do whatever he wants. You want to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. put a little bit of pressure on him. But as you said, uh, exactly correct. Straylock just not quick enough to pull that back. Possibly should have had uh, some sort of scout ahead to be aware of that so he could pull back more quickly. But game one behind us and in Liquid Tyler's pocket, he's up 1-0 in this best of three. 
we're going to be moving on to game number two, which is going to be on Taldrim Altar.